Hello, author of Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism here. Uh, new book that's out. It's free. Download it off of archive.org or off of any torrent site. Let's take a look at some phenomena of magnetism that you will not see anywhere else on YouTube or explained by any academic book. Uh, once you download the book and start reading it, you'll have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Like I said, it's a free download. Now, we've got three analogs here for looking at magnetic fields, but... What a magnet is, is not magnetism by definition. It is a, an electrified dielectric object. Now, the supposed um, quote-unquote uh, magnetic viewing film is actually a uh, velocity viewing film. As you can see here, you can see the dielectric inertial plane along the midsection between quote-unquote the two poles of which a magnet has no polarity. Clockwise spin and counterclockwise spin is just a... Uh, a perceptual uh, fallacy of a humanity for seeing one thing spinning in one direction from one side and the other direction from the other side. You can see here the quote-unquote pole on one side of the magnet. Each pole is marked with white tape. Okay, we have a magnetic little uh, magnetic uh, field finder here that uses a tiny little bar magnet itself. As you can see the dielectric inertial planes line up perfectly. As you can see the poles you can see the poles flipping there. Okay, now let's look at this nice little hand toy that I think everybody's seen. Why am I going to use this silly little toy? Well, because it's a perfect little demonstration device for showing you the dielectric inertial plane and what's going on in magnetism. Most people who know about electricity know about the right hand rule of electrification. As a sweeping magnet is crossing a uh, number of copper windings, you're getting electrification in this direction. Phi times psi equals electrification. How you getting a power out of a DC generator or AC generator. If this were to represent copper windings, this is what would be going on. Now here's something you won't find in the Faraday Law or the Faraday-Maxwell Law or in the, uh, the formula for magnetic moments. Let's take a look at what the difference is between a slow approach with a time variable versus the fast approach with a time variable. Here's a slow approach. You can see I only get a few nails lifted up. Now let's turn it upside down. Now look how many came forward. Most of them came forward. Very few didn't. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at it again with the fast approach. Ready? You see there's about five times as many nails lifted up, as well as a periphery. We got a great deal of dielectric displacement. We're getting activity not at 90 degrees here. We are along the dielectric this way in the ferrous iron nails, but we're getting reaction at zero degrees from approach this way. Obviously the nails and obviously uh, applied field, quote unquote, is occurring at zero degrees. So let's try the same thing. Turn it upside down and see what we get this time. Oh look, there's a ring. Let's try it again. I need to go a little faster this time. Ready? And turn it upside down. Now look, there's a huge ring around the magnet that did not approach. Why is that the case? When I dropped all the nails forward, this ring shouldn't be here. What is happening? Let's do that again. It's real slow and then real fast. Slow approach. A few nails lifted up. Turn it all upside down. Shake it really good. Look, most of the nails came forward. Now let's try it again really fast. Boom. Turn it upside down again. And look, there's a huge ring missing out of the center here. What happened from a fast approach that didn't happen on a slow approach, or vice versa? What's happening is, upon the fast approach in the nails, what it's doing is it's taking that every atom, of course, in the ferrous material, i.e. these nails, as well as any ferrous material that can have applied field to it, the fast approach is causing dielectric displacement. Just like spinning up a gyroscope, it's causing an electrical, actually specifically a dielectric, inertia to spin this way at 90 degrees. So we are getting a 90 degree reaction on a fast approach. What we're doing 
is we're not changing any portion of the magnetodielectricity within the ferrous materials. What we're doing is we're spinning up, as a crude analogy, the dielectricity, the centripetal, the inertial, the counterspatial dielectricity of the magnetodielectricity within each atom of the iron nails. And when I bring it forward, what I have is I have a spin up in this region of dielectricity, which is why when I tilt this forward after a fast approach, the nails do not want to come forward. Let's try that again. Boom. Drop the whole thing forward, shake it good. Look, you see that center ring? The missing center ring there? That's just like spinning up a gyroscope as an analogy. That's the inertial centripetal dielectric inertial plane being spun up in these nails to such a velocity due to the fast approach that they will not come forward. Now let's try it again, once again with a slow approach. And we'll show you some other effects. Slow approach. See very few, very few nails raise up. Let's turn it upside down, give it a good shake. And you'll see, completely opposite from the fast approach, most of the nails came forward. Much, much more. Now let's take a look at something else. You want to get a snapshot of the field? Because the field is conjugating centrifugally and centripetally to either side of the magnet. Each shake will give you a different design because each shake is giving you a new snapshot of the field conjugation. As I said, neither the magnetic moment formula, nor the Faraday formula, nor the Faraday-Maxwell formula, none exists for fast magnetic applied field. And there are plenty of uh, formulas for applied field with a time variable in a conductor where there is electrification. But what is occurring in these nails is something different. There's no electrification going on in here. What is happening is dielectric displacement through its inertial spin-up due to the fast magnetic approach of the applied field with a time variable. Let's look at the slow approach again. Slow approach, not many. And fast approach. Do you see that? There will be a lot more videos. I hope this explains something to you. I hate to use the gyroscope analogy over and over again, but it does kind of work that way. If you read the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, a free download off of any torrent site or off cathodos.com, just Google the word in parentheses, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. The third edition will be coming out with an additional 40 pages or so within the next month. Currently there are 110 pages. It's a free PDF download. It is the first explanation of magnetism, action at a distance, which is actually a fallacy. There is no instantaneous action at a distance. There is inside fields, but space is merely an attribute of a field. There are no fields expanding into space, rather space as an attribute of a field within a field, posterior to a field. Dr. Oleg Defimchenko discovered this in uh, several of his books that he's written. He's uh, won many awards. He's... Uh, he unfortunately died a few years ago, but see if you can buy one of these crude toys. They call them pin art. You can usually get them for $20 on eBay, and uh, you'll never see another video like this on eBay. This is actually the best analog for explaining fields to you, other than, of course, the many diagrams, the countless diagrams and pictures that I have in uh, the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. You'll find this on eBay under pin art. These are nothing other than steel pins. So, what is occurring here on fast, fast approach applied field? Remember, we're not changing anything in the magnetodielectricity within the inner atomic of the nails. So, what is occurring on fast approach when we do this and turn it upside down? And we have a resultant ring around the magnet. That, just like a gyroscope, is dielectric inertia, which has been spun up due to the rapid approach of the applied field, which is why when dropping this forward, these nails 
do not want to drop down into the high velocity centrifugal field of the edge of this extremely powerful N55 neodymium iron boron one inch by one inch. This is an extremely powerful, actually I think it's the N55 gauss, the last I checked uh, with my meter. So this is uh, part one. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, email me and uh, especially download the book. Remember that the source of the word magic is the root of the word magnetism. All these many years, uh, all these idiot, idiotic books that uh, do not explain magnetism, you will get a clear, lucid, logical, sensible, rational, with proofs, angles, field vectors, proportionalities, ratios, no New Age hokum, no wish-wash, speculation, conjecture, assumptions, personal opinions, or feelings, but genuine, rational, simplex understanding of what magnetism is. Why a magnet is a dielectric object. If you know actually how one of these type of super magnets or any magnet is actually created, you will know what it is. It is an electric object. Obviously, any object itself, any atom, is composed of magnetodielectricity with a nucleus. But what occurs to give this special magnetodielectric conjugate geometry to a magnet from electrification when dielectricity and magnetism move opposite to each other 180 degrees but cannot due to being in a binding system, i.e. the magnet. You'll read about that in the book, download it and have a better clear understanding. I'll make further videos if you have any recommendations for explaining any property of magnetism that you don't understand, send me a note, send me an email, I will gladly explain it to you and it will be rational, rational, sensible and you will understand it and you will finally say, well this isn't BS, this is, this is sensible, this is logical, this explains all observed phenomena, this is how magnetism works, this is what a magnet is, what you thought a magnet was or what you thought magnetism was, was wrong. But that doesn't have anything to do with you, it just means that you were taught BS, like the rest of us were in school. We were taught that, well, this attracts this, and the North Pole attracts the South Pole. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's called field incommensurability. There's a centrifugal field, there's a centripetal field, and there's a dielectric inertial plane along the edge of any magnet. No North Pole or South Pole can be separated out from any magnet. If you were to cut this magnet, from North Pole to South Pole, quote unquote, a million times, you would still have a South Pole on the very topmost section. That is field incommensurability. You also have a dielectric inertial plane. If you download the book, you understand why this is. It will be very sensible, very logical. No mysticism, no hokum, no nonsense. The most rational, and by rational I mean insane explanation of magnetism, can be found in QED Strange Theory of Light and Matter by Richard Feynman in which the idiots of general relativity and quantum mechanics explain action at a distance and magnetism by quote-unquote virtual photons. And this of course is nonsensical as saying angels, leprechauns, or unicorns are mediating instantaneous action at a distance. The most hideous, the most feared word you can ever ask a quantum physicist or someone that's interested in general relativity is define a field or what is a field. Nothing will make them shake faster, give them delirium tremors quicker than to ask them that single question. None of them know what a field is, how a field works, and it certainly dismisses general relativity. Tesla said that general relativity would soon be dismissed in the future as nonsense and he is right. Anyway, download the book and Email me any questions you have about magnetism because I can guarantee you I can answer them for you very quickly and very rationally and sensibly without making anything up or stretching your imagination or stretching credulity. Magnetism is extremely simplex, but it is not simple. Understanding field conjugation, understanding precession of field conjugation, uh, will be made lucidly clear to you in the book. Anyway, this is the end of section one, many sections to follow. Thank you for watching.